Hi everyone, welcome to The Witching Week. Today is episode number 61. I'm Ren. We're going to be talking about the new year, Christmas. We're going to be looking at some 2024 planners and basically just easing ourselves back into The Witching Week as we start a new calendar year. So grab a cup of tea, put some incense on, get comfy and we'll get started. everybody welcome back if you're new to the channel then welcome and happy new year to you all every friday we get together for an episode of the witching week where we talk about the seasons the turn of the wheel and we look at the events of the sort of the last week and the weeks to come so you're all so welcome here and it is so good to be back after the christmas break how are you all doing did you all have a good christmas your hanukkah whichever winter festival of light you celebrate did you have a good time i really really hope so i'm sorry i wasn't here on the 29th i just decided that it was just worth just sort of ending the year and then starting afresh and here we are i can't believe it's january again and yeah we're on the fifth already it is flying it's probably going to be another quick year isn't it um my friend reminded me that I'd written down that I thought that last year was going to be an absolute banger. I didn't mean for that to be in a negative sense. It was probably one of the worst years of my life. I think I probably kept that well hidden, which was obviously um, planned. But yeah, when I said it was going to be a banger, I thought it's going to be amazing. And it wasn't. But there was a lot to learn. There was a lot to learn. And I don't know about you guys, let me know what you think about 2024, but personally, I am so excited for 2024. I think because 2023 was so bad for me personally, I think that it can only really get better. And this year we have Jareth, the Goblin King, keeping us company, well, at least today anyway. So yeah, I think it's going to be a really, really good one. I d I'm not normally somebody who goes in for sort of like New Year's resolutions and stuff like that. And I definitely haven't made any New Year's re resolutions. I am going to have to change my diet just because I'm not moving around very much at the moment. So, and I need to obviously help protect my heart. So not that my, my diet is bad, but you know, over Christmas I indulge like we all did. It's good, isn't it? To just sort of enjoy yourself a little bit over the festive period but I'm just looking forward to like new adventures new opportunities for growth it, new chances to make memories even if these things happen from my armchair you know I'm really really excited for them so let me know what you think do you enjoy this sort of like time of the year this new year energy it does you know even if you're a witch or a pagan or somebody that starts your year or your new year in Sau at Samhain, I think that just having this like brand new slate for like a fresh page of the calendar year, I think is really, really nice. Um, I mean, obviously every day is an opportunity to start again, but there's just something really lovely, isn't there, about January the 1st. It just truly does feel like the start of something. I know many people feel like that in spring as well. And I have to say that kind that does sort of feel like the beginning of the year, actually. But there's just something about, I suppose, if there's practical things that you want to achieve or sort of financial goals or anything that sort of involves, I guess, less sentiment. I think that January the 1st is a really nice sort of time to sort of work from, although I guess, you know, other things as well. But um, yeah, so um, I'm gonna show you my planner that I've got for 2024 and also um, a pagan witchy sort of date book that I got for Christmas. And yeah, so let's, oh, we haven't done tea and incense, have we? Let's do that. I keep forgetting that actually. I keep like getting so excited and jumping in. So today I am burning some amber from the Mayfair collection, which is a, I think it's a Stamford, yeah, Stamford of London. I have to say that this, sorry Stamford, but this one's a bit soapy and is giving me a bit of a headache. So, although I've got a headache anyway, but um, yeah, not really digging that one, if I'm honest. And today I'm just drinking a uh, hot lemon. I've got a really bad sinus headache left over from having COVID. So yeah, I had it like, caught it like six weeks ago and I'm still not quite, well, nearly seven weeks ago and I'm still not quite over it yet. And nor is my husband. Apparently it's been quite bad the last one because 
it's mutated so much and then obviously people haven't had jabs for a long time and they don't have many antibodies because they've not had it because obviously this stuff you know doesn't go around so much in the summer and everyone's outside so yeah we're still getting over that but anyway um yeah planner so i i can't remember where we picked this up i chose this planner um my husband bought it and put it aside for me and i had it for christmas for you and i completely forgot about it and i unwrapped it and it was like oh that's nice but i had actually picked it but it's made by the only name i can find inside is ecolo so i'll see if i can find this online and then put a link to it but the reason i went for this planner is that it has a month to view so i find that i like to be able to see the whole month so that when i've got um things on i can spread them out just it's just a new thing since i sort of struggle with my energy levels i really 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 have to spread things out so i like to be able to see the whole month i like to be able to see when you know the kids are here and stuff and yeah i have to keep a diary now when i was younger i could just do everything in my head never forget anything never miss anything and i think as you get older it's it's not so easy to do that is it so yeah i like a month to view there is um there's like notes and to do's here at the beginning of each month there is a nice section on monthly focus important dates to remember highlights notes monthly goals and then there are these words throughout so follow your dreams they know the way and then there is like a week to view as well and then there's these little quotes at the top now the daft thing is i won't even use this section i literally use the month to view so i, I kind of almost don't need this whole book but um yeah it's just how i work and also there's a notes section at the back of each chapter as well so it is quite handy for writing stuff down lots of space to write down what you need there are also a load of stickers as well i probably won't use them i'll probably pull them out and give them to the kids i'm not really a person who is going to use a sticker that says kind heart fierce mind or brave spirit that's just not me really um but i really really liked the cover which is flowers and toadstools it's quite small last year i had quite a big planner um this one i wouldn't fit it in my handbag but if i was going somewhere where i needed to take a bigger bag i could probably fit that into a bag and i've taken these plastic dividers which let me know which month i'm on i actually took them out of the my old planner which i got from wh smith so yeah if you if you're not sure where to get a planner wh smith is really really expensive these days and i i can say that i never buy anything in there except for maybe a planner at the end of the year for the new year so i i don't think we got this in there but i'm not sure i really really can't remember and there's nothing written on the back either it just says a colo in the front so again i'll try and find that and i'll put a link to that if i can find that so my husband also bought me which initially and i've seen this for years and i don't think i've ever had one of these um and initially i thought oh you know why do i need two planners two diaries not that i'm not grateful but actually this is a brilliant book so it's llewellyn's witch's date book 2024 and it features loads of information from artists and pagans and writers and all sorts so um in here there is planetary movements there's moon phases there's information on when is a good time to plant or harvest by the moon which is very popular with a lot of witches who have their own gardens and it's supposed to be a very good way of planting there are articles in here on enhancing your witch site breaking out of mental ruts healing ancestral stories and things like crystals for divine alignment and it's just really nice um it does actually have a month to view as well um i just i don't know why but i quite like a hard cover on a planner i like it to be quite substantial i don't know why i do use it a lot so it has to be fairly sturdy and um, there's also a week to view here and then obviously you've got um information and stuff like that and there's recipes in here and all sorts in fact what did i see a recipe for 
which I thought sounded a little bit disgusting. It was parsnip tea bread or something. I'm sure it's lovely. I'm sure whoever put that, made that recipe, I'm sure it's lovely. Um, I will try it and only then can I pass judgment. But anyway, loads of stuff for you to say organise. Note section at the back, probably a little bit more practical in terms of putting in a book and carrying with you. And also just really nice because it's, you know, it's got witches in mind. And for every single day, there are magical correspondences. So for example, on September the 4th, um, it's got all the planetary and astrological and moon information. And then it says color white. So yeah, really, really helpful book if you're planning spells, planning any kind of magical workings. Um, some of the people in here that have written um, articles are Keldon, Tess Whitehurst, uh, Mickey Mueller, Deborah Blake, Laura Woodward, James Cambos, etc, etc. So really, really lovely. Thank you, hubby. Um, that is available, I think, US, Canada and the UK by the looks of the label on the back. So just the usual countries that Llewellyn sell their stuff. So yeah, really, really helpful. I quite like the Moon Diary by Moonology. Um, I don't have that, um, but that is a really, really helpful book because it's very moon based. So if you're into that kind of like moon magic and moon phases. And then another really, really helpful, wonderful book is um, Almanac. So the Almanac, and that is by the lady's name escapes me. I think it's Leah Linders. I might have that mixed up with someone else. I'm pretty sure it's Leah Linders, but um, yeah, my old lady memory's getting in the way. So really, really great books for planning, for journaling, for magic, for just basically getting yourself organized in like a bog standard way. So yes. One of my favourite things of Yule on a similar sort of note was, and I don't know if I showed you, I definitely put some pictures in my stories, but something that brought me great joy this Yule was my old fashioned advent calendar that my husband bought me. And this was just so lovely. It was just so joyful opening a little window each day and getting like a little owl, or a squirrel or a rabbit and then on the very last day it says wishing you a very merry christmas and a happy new year and i just love this so much and it's probably an indicator of my age but i just thought it was so charming and it just took me back to being a kid we did have cho chocolate advent calendars as kids but i'm sure we had when i was much much younger i'm sure we only had something like this um you know these are very traditional and i just thought it's so lovely to mark the days to Christmas without needing, you know, chocolate or a gift or, you know, I just think this is just lovely. And I just appreciate this so much more than perhaps getting a chocolate calendar or even one with gifts. I find Christmas quite overwhelming, if I'm honest. I really, really struggle with the whole present thing. Um, I get quite anxious about what I'm giving other people, whether it's enough, all these sorts of worries. And then me and myself, I get, I feel quite bogged down if I've got too much in the way of gifts. I mean, from a purely practical note, you know, storing them, just having it all the stuff kind of weighing me down, but I don't know, I don't know if it's just like a mental overwhelm thing, but I really, really like consumable gifts these days. So I really like things like perfume, chocolate, biscuit, you know, stuff that can be shared and stuff that eventually will, you know, get definitely get used and yeah it's it's weird isn't it getting older that everything changes as you get older and the way that you you mark these seasonal celebrations and sabbats and things like that it, it yeah it does change it definitely changes and it definitely becomes more magical in some ways i think um and less magical in others so i'd really like to know what has been special for you this sort of winter festival has it been okay um 
Have you had any sort of special gifts or experiences? Maybe you've had some important lessons or, you know, found some important insights. Let me know, how was it for you? Maybe it's a time of year that you really, really struggle with. Maybe like me, you like to sort of like hibernate in your own home and you don't like too much fuss. Let me know how it is for you. It's obviously can be a very, very difficult time of year. For many people, it's difficult due to family, whether that be issues or lost loved ones. I lost my godmother, as you know, not that not that long before Christmas, about four weeks before Christmas. So she was on my mind a lot. Um, and it's just different, isn't it, as you get older compared to when you were a kid. I did get some lovely books for Christmas, so I'm going to do a separate video on that. I'm going to do a Christmas book haul and show you some really, really gorgeous books. One of them is full of art on witches and it is really, really lovely. So yeah, we'll take a look at that soon. So how are you all feeling about the new year? Um, we spoke about this a little bit at the beginning of the video, but are you into the whole sort of like new year energy? Does it mean absolutely nothing to you? Are you not fussed? Is it just another day? Which of course it is, but how do you feel? I mean, generally I'm not fussed about new year. We don't, we don't go out generally. We did pop out in the evening, but we were home and in bed by about half past 10, maybe 11 at the latest. We definitely missed the strike of the clock at midnight. Um, I'm not really one for setting New Year's resolutions because I feel like, you know, any day is a good day to get something started and to crack on with it. But there is that nice feeling, like I was saying before, about, you know, a fresh, fresh start, a fresh page. And I am absolutely, absolutely buzzing this year. I just feel like there are such good things in the pipeline for me personally, but also for some people I know and love that have had hard years. I feel like it can only get better. Uh, I think obviously globally, I think we're headed for more unrest. We seem to be in a very, very unsettled period. The last sort of five years have been awful, haven't they really overall? Well, I guess it's the last sort of three years, isn't it? Three, four years. I don't think things are gonna get any better for a while. I think things are gonna get a lot harder, but I think we are reaching a bit of a precipice and, or, you know, a tipping point. And then I think sooner rather than later, hopefully things are gonna spring back the other way. They usually do. Um, I, yeah, there's some nice things that I am trying to manifest. One of them, I think I shall know in days and then the other, it could be months, but I'll, I'll let you know when I know. But yeah, some very exciting things in the pipeline, some big risks, some big changes maybe. I'll, I'll keep you posted, I'll keep you posted, but let's just say I'm working, excuse me, I'm working my magic and um, trying to implement some changes. So uh, moving on to other news, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Come say hello. If this is the first time you're watching, come say hello. I am a little bit out of practice today, I must admit. Finding it hard to find my words and also to get the old grey matter working. But we're here, we're here and we're doing it. And I'm absolutely loving being back. So hello to you all and hi if you're new. So on the winter solstice, I received an envelope. And I didn't know it was coming and it was a complete surprise, but we, my husband and I now have the title of Lord and Lady. So I've mentioned this in my Instagram stories. A couple of American guys have asked me to explain because they don't understand. To the Americans watching, I don't think you're sort of on your own because I think a lot of British people don't understand either. So I, we can use the title Lord and Lady. So I'm now Lady Wren Harris and my husband is Lord Harris and we are Lord and Lady Harris of Hoogan Manor Estate. Now this was gifted to us. So basically, and lots of people don't know this, but under English common law, you can basically, this is as far as I'm aware, so there might be someone out there watching who's going to correct me on this. And if, if you do, that's fine. I mean, this is all a bit fun, really. But you can call yourself Lord or Lady. It's the same as I could call myself Ms. Um, if I wanted to, when I was 
before I married my husband, I was Mrs. something, but I was actually divorced, So, but I was still Mrs. So this is about your title. This is not about a title as in a hereditary title or a life peerage that's been bestowed upon you by the Queen. So it is not a lordship. You know, we do not have a lordship or a ladyship in that sense. But we can now, we've got a certificate, we, so that we can change on our credit and debit cards, stuff like that. Um, well, you wouldn't change it on your passport because there's no title on there. And also, I think for a government document like that, you, yeah, you would need to have a, a lordship bestowed upon you by the Queen, or you would need to have that passed down as a hereditary title. So, but it's a bit of fun. A bit of fun and um, wh where we live is an extremely posh and well-to-do area and I'm extremely tempted to change my name to Lady on all my paperwork as a, a bit of a two fingers up to the establishment. What do you think? Should I do it? Should I do it? I mean I'm not sure in some ways I'm really not sure that I can be asked and obviously it is a bit pretentious but that that would kind of be the point. It would be a bit ironic, wouldn't it? It would it would be a bit of a laugh. So we've got a lovely certificate. Um, I might just show you a snippet of the paperwork. But yeah, I just thought that was really funny. So that was a beautiful gift. So if you're watching John and Noel, who sent that to us, thank you so much. Um, and yeah, let me know in the comments if you've had any wacky gifts like that or any fun gifts that um, might actually make a bit of an impact to your world. Let me know in the comments. And I have to say that my favourite gift of all was something I received when we went to our moot Christmas party. So at our moot Christmas party, we had a little game at the end, which is absolutely beautiful and very well set up. So thank you to Claire and Rachel, who set up the, uh, the party in the afternoon, but they wrapped up a load of gifts, all sorts of things from chocolate to biscuits to alcohol to some lovely pagan items. And we all went and we chose a gift and we unwrapped it. And then we found somebody that we wanted to give the gift to. So we did it in a way where everyone ended up with something. And I ended up with the most beautiful little tea light holder. And this was given to me, I'm not going to use his name, but this was given to me by a little boy who, as soon as he unwrapped it, he came rushing over to me and he said, Ren, I really want to give my gift to you. So we, th we formed a circle and we, we then exchanged gifts and he had the opportunity to give it to me. But I just thought that was so sweet and so lovely. And he was absolutely so over the moon to get this and give it away. And I just thought, what a lovely way. It was kind of almost like a backwards raffle. Um yeah where you where you chose something and you unwrapped it and then you chose the person that you thought it would suit so yeah thank you so much for this I, I don't think he'll be watching but his mum might be so thank you so much I was so touched and I was I was just really touched by his absolute enthusiasm and happiness that he got to have something and then give it away to someone and I think that says a lot about that particular young man and his mum and his family so thank you so much he's about I'm trying to work out how old he is I think he's about 11 but yeah thank you that was my favourite thing of the whole period so tell me about your festive break I know I've mentioned this several times throughout but yeah just leave me comments and whatever I want to hear I want to hear all about how you are what you've been up to, um, what you've been doing. Oh yeah, we did also go to, I nearly forgot before I do these cards, I'm gonna tell you about it while I shuffle. On the 1st of January, we went to see our local Sheila a gig. Uh, now we're not actually sure, or they're not sure, they, you know, the people that are in the know, they're not actually sure she definitely is a Sheila a gig, but we refer to her as the Sheila a gig and she, she is known locally as the goddess. And she used to be under the step of a church. She was upside down. Um, people were walking on her to get into the church. Then around about the 1920s, she was discovered. So I think she might have been forgotten. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the story, but basically she now stands upright in the churchyard. So we went to see her. We visit her on Beltane usually and take her some flowers and honour in that way. This time we went, um, we again, we took some offerings, but we wanted to ask her help. We wanted to ask her love and support for this year. 
and for some of the things that we would like to achieve and that we would just need some help and support with. So that was everything from, um, well, we didn't ask too many things, but that was um, like just like love and support for our relationship and then just uh, two things that we really, really want to make happen. So, yeah, we went and spent some time with her she's really beautiful she's really old and we're just so lucky to have her so we did that on January the 1st we weren't there long we were there about 15-20 minutes and um, that's how we marked the beginning of the year so what did you guys do did you do anything were you in bed with a hangover maybe you had a massive party on the 31st um did you get up and go for a run or something sporty like that maybe you've got some news resolutions that started on january the first let me know and as i said let me know about how your whole festive period went because obviously from about the end of november when i had covid i've not been here very much so i'm sure we've got absolutely loads to catch up on so let me pick some cards now we're just gonna that one jumped out so and so did that one um we're just going to have a little look at the energy of the week ahead, things that might go down or ways of looking at things and dealing with them if they do. So we've got four cards today. We've got the Wheel of Fortune, we've got Temperance, we've got the Four of Cups and we've got Queen of Cups. So the message here is, is that if things have been tough, then pretty soon the wheel is going to switch back round and things are going to get better. This ever sort of spinning wheel, you know, if you're up here, eventually you'll find yourself down here, but then soon enough, you're going to be back up here again. So if things have been really difficult, then don't worry. They, your fortunes are going to change and they're going to be much better soon. So that is really, really nice to hear. The message here though is to take the middle path try and maintain some balance some perspective you know it's, it's not just you and how you feel take into consideration other people's opinions and thoughts and feelings as well take that middle path don't be too extreme try and walk sort of somewhere down the line you know compromise perhaps might be needed and also, you know, stop refusing other people's help. Maybe you've been a bit overwhelmed and you haven't felt that you can, you know, take someone else's hand. But to get out of the doldrums, to get out of a bad situation or to get out of, you know, the feeling of being unsatisfied and bored is actually sometimes to take the opportunities that are offered to you, even if that is in the form of help from other people. So and a, you know, also just to go with the flow, you know, listen to your heart, listen to your intuition, you know, listen to your emotions and take the path that seems to make the most sense if you listen to that intuition. Um, sometimes it's easy to follow our heads and the practical sort of thoughts and ideas that we come up with and the practical advice, but actually sometimes we have to listen to our intuition and, and um, follow that instead. So yeah, so what a lovely reading for the beginning of the year. What lovely cards. So it's so good to be back. I don't plan on taking any more breaks. Hopefully I won't be catching COVID again for a while. And um, I will be back next week with another episode of The Witching Week. I don't know what we'll be talking about. Um, I have noticed it's getting a bit lighter so that's very exciting so as we move on through the year obviously there'll be you know the light's going to increase the warmth is going to increase we're all going to have more energy we're all going to have more interesting things to talk about so we've just got this last little push haven't we now to in bulk um we are entering the coldest and sort of the darkest even though the days are getting lighter we're, we're entering the hardest part of the winter aren't we so just one last little push now to the spring. I know we're all looking really forward to it. So anyway, I'm about to ramble on again. So yeah, happy new year to you. Thank you for watching. Have a fantastic week. Take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you next time. All right, lots of love, bye.